Mr. Seven here as your host on The Seven Show this evening. And yet again, lads, another week, another brand new segment coming to The Seven Show. So I'm looking forward to that. But first, let me introduce the panelists for tonight. On my right, we've got another happy Scouser. Bring it up for Chris. How you going, everybody? Hope you enjoyed the Premier League as much as I did this week. It was fantastic. It was. It was definitely one of the better weeks. Anyways, on my left, another, or I should say, a bit different. Sim- not not Sim- so happy. Yeah. You know, Manchester United fan. We've got Edgar. Big it up for him. How's it going, guys? Pumped for the show. Let's give a good performance, boys. Yes, let's get stuck into it. Let's get into the review, lads. And again, I think third week running, United opening up the Premier League uh, weekend. This time at home to Newcastle in a nil-nil draw. Edgar, take it away. Mate, that, this kind of game is where that expression comes from. It was one of those days. I mean, true. people drill in the performance, but I thought we looked good, man. I mean, we moved the ball, but the final product just was crap, man. The crossing, we just didn't find enough men. The finishing just wasn't on. And in the end, mate, it could have very well been about 5-0, but yeah. you know, you've got to take your chances. Chris, opinions on the game? Um, I think I think United weren't weren't that good at all, actually. I, I think they would have been very disappointed because I, I penciled them in for, for a very easy win. All right, the Newcastle back four was definitely up for this game, oh, yeah. and so was a goalkeeper. Oh, yeah. And they could have actually stole it in the end. Yeah, uh, it was it was decent, decent nil or draw. My opinions on the game: I thought the way the game started, I thought we were unreal. Oh, we I we were rolling. Man. We picked up where we left off from Bruges. Absolutely. We were unreal. But as the game went on, we just got worse and worse, and yeah. more disappointing. We got we got all happy where we were going. We we're just too placid, you know. We we're just passing around. We weren't. Putting Newcastle to the sword, yeah. and in my opinion, if that's City at the Etihad, or if that's Chelsea at Stamford yeah. Bridge, that would be putting Newcastle to the mm. sword, and they would have found a way to score. Okay. And I'm and I'm a little bit concerned that we didn't do that. I thought Memphis had a great game, just yeah. very very selfish. One matter, I thought he was eh. Wayne Rooney, he had no service. He's getting a lot of criticism, yeah. in my opinion, but he's getting he's no not getting bored service whatsoever. But like you know, it's difficult to sustain, sustain a performance for ninety minutes. But just off the bat, you had the Rooney go offside. You had Chicharito. You had Carrick. You had Smalling. Yeah. It's four goals right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. No one's knocking the performance if you win four 0 exactly. It was just a matter of finishing. Yeah. And, and, and credit does have to go to Newcastle. Oh, absolutely, opinion. man. Well done. I thought. I thought you know to come to United, uh, Old Trafford, and get that result. Fair play to him. Yeah. Anyways, on to the next game. Crystal Palace defeating Villa two one. Chris, thoughts on the game? Yeah, good, good game, good performance for um for Villa. Um, sorry, Palace. Oh, yeah. Three points that they they deserved, I think. And um, bad luck for Yednek, who's copped a hamstring injury out of that yeah. game. Yeah, he's gonna be out for a few and weeks. Saka with a debut goal. For, oh yeah. For a moment, I thought it was backroom Saka that's come over from West Ham. No, nah, that's not. Yeah. It's yeah. a different yeah. Saka. His mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leicester um getting a draw yes. with uh, Tottenham. That was interesting. Now, I did predict, if you guys remember my bold prediction last week, was Tottenham were going to be in the relegation zone. zone, And they just scraped out the relegation. What are they, 17th or something like that? Just there. Just there, mate. So, my bold prediction was almost right. But uh, fair play to Leicester, because they were 1-0 down with five minutes to go. Yeah, Dali Ali. um, Yeah. Scoring midfielder, apparently. Big rap. Mahrez. I think it's scored for no, no, Leicester. No. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying Ali scored for... um, Tottenham, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so um, Norwich... Uh, getting a draw with uh, Stoke there in, um, what's his name's first game? Shakiri. Shakiri's first game there. Oh, mate, yeah. Butlin had a clinic that day. Yeah. He did, didn't he? My lord, what a performance. Yeah. Uh, Sunderland getting a one all draw at home to uh, Swansea, which a result I did not see coming I mean, at that, all. Absolutely. Yeah, another good performance from um, Pantalimon, who was, who was excellent. Yeah. yeah, he was good. In this game. And, uh, Swansea sh- could have easily won the game. Four, uh, four, uh, yeah, good. yeah, he made a terrific save of a Gomez header. And shout out to uh, Jermaine Defoe yeah. scoring another goal. He's in my fantasy Premier League team. Respect. Was well, it's not doing so well, but Jermaine Defoe's keeping me just a little bit above water. Anyways, <laughs> on to West Ham losing to Bournemouth and matching around for me. Um, oh, yeah, I thought, what a cracking game yeah. this was. West Ham were not the best. Mm. Were Bournemouth? They were exciting to watch. Very, very exciting. Dream, dream hat trick for Wilson. Ah, oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. That first goal, yeah. oh, unreal. Yeah, he played, he played real well. But uh, I, 
I, I called last week Bournemouth would get a result in this game because they were excellent against Liverpool and they deserved these three points. You did say that, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, Jenkinson had a shocker. Yeah. Not just Jenkinson, the Creswell. Fullback. Creswell as well, yeah, Creswell. you're right. Yeah, they both did. That, that first goal that he gave away where he just got dispossessed, yeah. mate. Oh, that was terrible. But uh, fair play to Bournemouth, first three points in the uh, Premier League this season. And then another big game this yep. week was uh, Chelsea getting their first win of the season. 3-2 against uh, West Brom at the Hawthorns. And a dream uh, debut for Pedro, Edgar. Yeah, I actually caught this one on the replay, guys. Um, mate, Pedro slipped right in. I mean, he looked like William. Real similar to Williams. Very similar players. But, uh, man, he looked like he'd been playing there his whole bloody life. You know, it's just straight away off the, the bat. The guy was a little bit deflection. One of yeah, the I, don't, I know, but, yeah. mate, he put it in the back of the net. And, by the way, I just want to say, last week, that we didn't talk about Pedro going to Chelsea because it literally yeah. happened as we were recording the episode. I got so. back, got the tweet from Curtis. I'm just like... Yeah, I treated you as both. I was in shock myself. But yeah. your thoughts on the game, Chris? Oh, I'm disappointed actually with West Brom uh, because they had a, they had ten men. Chelsea had ten men for a good twenty yeah twenty five minutes of the game. Half Didn't make the most of it. Something like half an hour. I think West Brom should have really went at Chelsea and and they just didn't and and it just seemed an easy three points in the end. And I think, what's it, Morrison? Morrison, yeah. Could have had a hat trick, man. Could have made it 1 0. Yeah. Very different game from there on, man. Yeah. Everton also do, uh, losing 2 0 to City, which there's no really shame there, but City just look like a. They look scary, man. Uh, they do, don't they? They look like a scary team. They really do. I yeah. mean, they've they've kind of gotten rid of that 4 4 2 where they play the two strikers and got that 4 5 1, and that midfield just looks solid, man. Yeah, with Sterling in there. Sterling out there, it looks, look, mate. It completes the team. Yeah, I mean, it's it stupid, really does, it man. sounds, but it really it does. Really does. Anyways, Watford nil nil with Southampton. I didn't catch the game personally, uh, but a nil nil that I did catch was Arsenal against Liverpool. Chris, being a Liverpool fan, your thoughts and opinions on the game? Uh, I think it was. A, I think it was an excellent game um, overall for a nil nil draw. Uh, it was definitely. I just want to say it's probably one of the best nil nils you'll yeah, probably see all season. Game, uh, mm-hmm. Peter Cech and Mignolet were both outstanding in this game. Uh, the Liverpool defense was. Absolutely brilliant. I haven't seen a, def- a Liverpool defence defend like this for a very long time. They look like an actual unit for a change, which which I haven't seen. Before the before the kickoff, when I seen their lineups, I must admit I thought Liverpool would win. I thought Liverpool would win the game because I thought Benteke would would take advantage of Callum Chambers mm-hmm. and of Gabriel. Um, he, no, he had no, 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 He had chances too, but I thought Liverpool were a little bit poor in the second half because um, they kind of let yeah. Arsenal control the game a little bit. That's dropped. But yeah, I, I think Liverpool overall probably should have should have got the three points. But I'm happy with the team actually working together and and having a game plan for a change, which hasn't happened for yeah. a while. Now last week, uh, uh, Benteke scoring a goal that was offside. This time, Ramsey scoring a goal that was onside that was disallowed for offside, mate. What was your opinions when that goal hit the back of the oh, net? I'm very, very happy, obviously. <laughs> but like, you gotta, t- you gotta take these things if they, if they come to you. You, you just you take do. them, and they say things even out. And if they do even out, we're in for a shock and run. Uh, <laughs> after a while, but you know, you take these, they take those. Yeah, Edgar, yeah. your opinions in the game? Yeah, man, absolutely cracking game. I mean, some star performers, everyone doing their bit. Just um, sad there was no goals, really. Yeah, I just, I thought Liverpool were the better team. You know, First half, yeah. Considering, you know, Arsenal this season, and this is not me saying this, this is their fans saying this, they're in title contention. You know, that's two games they haven't scored at home now for Arsenal. So, a little mm. bit concerning for the Gunners there. But for me, Liverpool should have taken home all three points. But anyways, lads, that's the review for this week. Let's get into the segment, Hit and Miss. Now there, here's Rooney. Oh my goodness! And how empty a net do you need it to be? Welcome to the segment Hit and Miss, where we give our biggest hits and our biggest misses for the week. So, starting off with you, Chris, give us your biggest hit for the week, mate. Well, my hit this week goes to a majority. I'd not say I'd say ninety percent of the goalkeepers in the English Premier League. They were they were played like like uh, superheroes. Um, I'll start with uh, Tim Krul. For Newcastle, he, he was, was brilliant. You know, he just, could have been man of the match. Oh, and you could see when he was making saves, you just celebrate. Pumped, him, just yeah, loved it. I don't know if he was trying to prove a point to Van Hal, maybe not being the Dutch number one. I'm not sure, but he was. He looked like he was playing for some, for something other than a point. Yeah. Um, also, who else was there? It was Jack Butlin from Stoke, who was who was outstanding, especially in that second half. He was saving absolutely everything. Pantillamon. And it looked like that's why he is um, like up there, like as an English uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, choice goalkeeper. Yeah, he is. Um, there was also Pantillamon from. 
Daniel Sunderland. Yeah, you said that before. He was brilliant. Yeah, making making saves left, right, and centre. Um, uh, I'll go with and 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 in the and in the big game between Arsenal and Liverpool, both Czech, keepers. Yeah. Czech was just like you. You remember the save off Benteke? Not many people would make that save. Like, and it, it, a lot of people are saying, okay, Benteke should have scored, should have scored. But when you've got a world class goalkeeper, sometimes you got to give the goalkeeper credit for a save like yeah, that. Yeah, it was. And and he made one other save to against Coutinho, which was even better than that Unreal. one. It was just it was just unbelievable. Out of this world, goalkeepers for me, fantastic league. Well, talking about hits and um, Coutinho, my biggest hit of the week is Coutinho. I thought he was unbelie- uh, unbelievable. You've been banging on about him to me for a while, but I really took... Not that I took notice, he stood up and then I took notice to uh, Coutinho. He was just unbelievable, did so many wonderful things in this game and just really stood out to me. Just I don't know if it was Henderson not there and he just took over as a leader. He just He just seemed to be always... Creating there something. and about, yeah, yeah, he was just seemed to be there. That not, I wouldn't say the only avenue, but the best avenue yeah. Liverpool came force, was always yeah. coming from Coutinho. You know, I'll say something about Coutinho and about and about this game. If you look at Arsenal's lineup, you've got Mesut Ozil, you've got Aaron Ramsey, and you've got Santi Consol. This might sound a bit biased, and Sanchez, and Sanchez, and they're all very similar players to Coutinho. And he was head and shoulders above them on yeah. the pitch in that day. So that yeah. shows I'll the, the quality. That. Yeah, I back you that. Yeah. Even with Ox- Oxlade Chamberlain coming on, on and, bench, and yeah. Walcott. Yeah, they're all similar sort of players. Yeah, yeah. But you think Bellerin is still looking for him in uh, the end of <laughs> Mate, that move on uh, Bellerin was uh, probably one of the best things I've we'll seen see. all season. But <laughs> Edgar, let's get to your hit of the week. Yeah, guys, um, personally, I can't look past Pedro. I mean, the guy comes straight into the lineup, starts on the wing, away from home, piercing down rain, a couple of days with his teammates, he gets a goal, gets an assist. Yes, they look like a shot. End of the day, mate, it's going to say assist, and mate, he had a pretty good game. It was it was a pretty dream, good, pretty oh, good dream. It does not get much better, mate. You made, uh, made headlines, man. Easy. Yeah. yeah, fair play to Pedro. Fair play to Chelsea getting Pedro. So, uh, yeah. anyways, Edgar, back to you, mate. The biggest miss for the uh, week. Now, well, this, these can be controversial, so please don't get too upset with us, yeah. but we have to name a miss. All right. Um, and well, you'll miss. My my mine stems a bit more than the week, but when I saw the rumors about Neymar coming to United, I just flipped out, man. I mean, so my miss of the journalists, really. What? Yeah? It's not actually happening. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, and the worst part is some people get sucked into this. I mean, just oh, off no. the bat, that's the saddest bit. <laughs> just off the bat, I'll name you players who've been linked with this summer: Neymar, Pedro, Ramos, Bale, Otamendi, Felipe Anderson, Lewandowski, Muller, Gaetan. All midfielders and forwards. And just, Bale and Ronaldo. <laughs> I mean, there you go, man. It's just, people just get sucked into it, man. And it's just, it's bullcrap now, man. I mean, yeah. there's just no solid news anymore, man. It's just... Yeah. Well, to be honest, to be fair, I will say this, that United, year in, year out, do get linked with these players every single, every player, single year. Every it's single just player. that, for some people, they just forget every single year that we get yeah. linked with all these players. It's just... It just comes to this time of year, everyone gets pissed yeah. off. And if you ask me why we won't get Neymar, they just sold Pedro... And they play a front three, man. So who are they going to play Sandro and Munir in that position? Yeah. I mean, they're champions of Europe, man. They're not just going to cough up Neymar like that. Yeah. All right, now, my miss for the week was actually a miss that was said last week from you, Chris, and it is the officials. I am going with that miss for this week. The officials this week were appalling, in my opinion. Yeah, well, we'll start off with Rooney, jeez. Mate, Rooney, definitely onside. I don't care what people say, if it was on or off. If level is on, okay, which I don't think he was level, I think he was on, he's but on, if man. he was level, level's on. Advantage goes to the attacker. Same with Aaron Ramsey, you know? So, the officials, mate, last week and this week, come on, turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, go for your my, biggest miss of the week. My miss of the week goes to the West Ham fullbacks. And they, yeah. uh, I think between... Creswell and Jen- <clears throat> Jenkinson look like an absolute circus show out there. Yeah. Um, Jenkinson, when he let that ball bounce, it just it just goes back and gets gets. And gets away pulled him. <laughs> gets away, Rick. Uh, Slav and Bilic would have been going absolutely mental after yeah. the game. Creswell, I rate Creswell, and um, to be honest, um, there's a question that I'll probably there's a question after that I'll I'll, I'll mention Creswell. Um, <laughs> 
I thought he was very poor, very below. Like, Especially like, for that first yeah, goal. That first, that first goal. goal and even the second goal. Their whole defence was a shambles. Stuff but, me, yeah, yeah I, I expect better from Creswell the way he's been playing. Yeah. You can, and you can. Uh, people said to me, some guy at work said to me, uh, you know, Ogbonna went off, so you can understand, mate. When Ogbo- Ogbonna went off, they were two 0 down. But they, that, that he dra- he dragged Ogbonna. Yeah, I know. Ogbonna was not injured. He took him off because there was. I watched the game and there was a there was a passage where Ogbonna gave the ball away. Like between the the the, goal, the the box and and halfway line, and he didn't. He just looked like he didn't care that he gave the ball away. They were in shambles, and he just and, yeah. he, and he just dragged him straight off the ground. So yeah, shocking from West Ham. Yeah, it was. So that's your hits and misses for the week. Now let's get to your Twitter questions. All right, here we go for this week's Twitter questions. Now the first question of the rank is from Lewis. Lewis. Asking brilliant questions. He was on the show last week, and uh, again, he's asking lads. Good form, Lewis. Has United lost its edge in term of uh, in terms of signing big players, and do we need to sign a big name after three have gone this window? That is a very, very good question, Lewis. And that is a question. I'm gonna start with you, Chris. Yeah, I, I think honestly, United has lost its edge in buying players, and and so has a lot of other teams. Now it seems like Man City and Chelsea just hold all the cards to buy in these big players. And as soon as they come in with their big money, with their fancy cars, with their houses, that they're, they're obviously giving players really good good benefits. I think that's the, only, that's the only problem. But then again, money talks United have more than probably anybody. Maybe they, do, they should just throw some crazy money at someone. And I think they do need to sign a big name, especially striker. So, uh, your opinions, £137 million pounds for Neymar. No, I don't I think it's going to happen. Uh, uh, no, not on Neymar, but that kind of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of those? Oh, that's that? ridiculous money, life. Uh, that's but ridiculous that's the kind money. of money that, that probably would That's land. the economy now, man. That's yeah, prob- but I don't think... They could throw that money at him. I don't think Neymar's going anywhere. No, 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 no one does. I you guys do, do either. There's this realistic God, play. No. Throw seventy million at Royce. That there's a realistic player that will go if you want to spend the big money. For me, Royce wouldn't yeah. leave. He wouldn't leave to United for seventy. I mean, million. I'm telling you, he's in love with Borussia. He won't leave until he wins that title. Maybe, but there's got to be players out there more realistically that more realistic yeah, yeah, than Neymar. Neymar absolutely. is just absolutely ridiculous. I don't know where they're getting <coughs> these rumors. Oh, mate. Right. I've been saying, said, miss, I've miss. been saying, get Danny Wilbur back for ages. <laughs> uh, Edgar, your opinion, quickly. Um, yeah. So, great question to start off with, Lewis. I'm going to say no. Um, you just look at... You know, last... I haven't lost the edge. No, absolutely not. Just look at our last couple of windows. So we had Mata in, um, you know, mid-season. Um, yes, it was a bit of a reject, but, you know, he's still a freaking quality player that came over. We picked up Dimaria and Falcao. Yes, they were flops, but, mate, Dimaria was sensational. Falcao, at the time, uh, was one of the best strikers in the world. And now we just pulled in Schweinsteiger. I don't know many other teams that would have pulled in Schweinsteiger, leaving, you know, Bayern Munich. You've got to have some kind of pull to do that and um, no I don't think we should uh, sign another big team player um, quite oh happy. really you don't think we should go go, um, shouldn't get Muller Bale oh look I, it just what's available no Yeah. I, look for me Muller is no one near available so um, yeah I'm going to say no alright I'm going to my opinion on this question Lewis is that in terms of signing big players for me United have never been a team for buying big players great Fergie always used to buy a player like a Berbatov, maybe a Tevez, mm. you know. They're not world class as in best in the world, you know, like, um, you know, I don't know, Messi or Ronaldo. Okay. You know, United have never ever been that kind of club. It's only recently, yeah. until when Moyes took over, and now that Louis Van Hal's here, that we are buying these kind of players. Never in my whole lifetime have United gone out and bought, you know, 80, you know, 80 million Gareth Bale. Yeah. It just never happens. Up until, yeah. You know? We do buy, it. you know, big money up and coming players, Wayne Rooney, the you play. know, yeah, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I, I, for me, it's like, we can't really lose a, lose an edge that we never really had. Mm. We basically only had that one or two seasons that we went crazy, but that's just my opinion. Do we need to sign a big name? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think everyone's just panicking because yeah. we're getting linked every day to someone. I don't think we need to. That's just my opinion on the matter. Anyways, next question comes from Neil McCormack. And he says, I know it's early days, but will Sunderland avoid the drop this year? Hashtag 7 show. Make sure you guys use the hashtag 7 show. Chris, Sunderland, they, they gone? That, it, it looks it looks like uh, bleak Ooh. viewing for Sunderland fans, and if you're a Sunderland fan, 
Please stop listening. Mute it for the <laughs> bit. I, I think that they they. Um, Gone. I think. They, they, yeah, <laughs> Let's I, not beat around the bush. I think them and West Ham are big, big trouble. West, West, West Ham fans as well. Yeah, yeah, it could be, man. Uh, I'm I'm with Chris. I reckon Sunderland. Yeah, I look. I think Sunderland could survive, but not with Dick Advocate. I mean, you got to get someone in there that's just going to shake up that dress. Well, he room. pulled them out the the slumps last year. Yeah, but oh, by skin of their teeth, mate. And it, it wasn't did. it wasn't brilliant yeah. managing. Yeah, it was okay. just a bit of luck involved that results didn't go our team's way. All right. Um, next question. Now, this is a really, really good question. This one's from Craig, and he asks, "Who is the most underrated player in the Premier League?" That is a very, very good question, Craig. Edgar, I'm coming to you with this one. I'll take it, mate. Um, well, I've won with Lukaku, guys. Um, Romelu Lukaku, the most underrated player in the whole yeah, league. It was a difficult question. To it was, of, I'll say to, that. To be fair. But um, we're just looking at, at the point where you take him out and it's a very different team. And Lukaku, man, to be fair, he could start in quite a few teams, man. On top of that, he's just got a few injury problems. But on his day, man, he is just as good as anyone else. And very difficult to mark, and he gets goals, mate. Yeah, yeah. For me, my most underrated player in the whole of the Premier League is very biased and very selfish, and that is Ander Herrera for Manchester United. I think, this is very controversial, I think he is by far our best midfielder in the team, and we are a different team when Ander Herrera is not in there. So for me, massively, massive underrated Ander Herrera. Chris, who's your biggest underrated player? Well, my, my underrated player goes to um, Kolarov for Man City. I think I think he's a great great fullback. Maybe he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but I think when every time I watch Man City play, he seems to be like get down the line, whipping beautiful crosses. In. He never he never sprays a bad delivery. Nah, does he? he's, he's got he seems to have a lot a lot of uh, a lot in his locker. He does. Um, yeah, so he, he's my he's, it was a very very good question, Hoi Wee Jan, but very hard question. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, next question is, who is the best manager in the world? Now, that is a very, very hard question. Oh, that's how we... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, the... I was just pumped to say his name. Yeah. <laughs> So, Craig, thanks for your good question, but this question is from... Ho Wee Jan. And he says, who is the best manager in the world? And that is so difficult. And go, we're going to you this one first. Yeah, guys, we're going controversial with this one. Very controversial. Absolutely. Tony Poulos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, um, now, I'm going with Carlo Ancelotti, guys. I mean, not but he's, many... But he's not managing. Yeah, I know. He's out of a job right now because he's that good, man. Nah. N- no team is worthy. <laughs> um, but no, Carl Ancelotti, man. I mean, the guy's bought success everywhere. He can build a team. He can work with stars. It's just a proven track record, man. I mean, he's won it in England, Italy, um, freaking France and Spain, man. So, no, no, no. He didn't win in Spain, did he? Yeah, I think he won. No, he did. He did? Yeah. So, oh, he won the Champions League. Yeah. Champions. Yeah, he, the, you know, so he got that. Yeah, he got that long lost title. But so um, Chris takes all the boxes. He does. He does. So Chris, after <laughs> Brendan Rodgers, who's the second best manager in the world? <laughs> <Tony> <laughs> <Pilos>. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Uh, it's no, a very difficult question. Yeah, it's the question I didn't like very much when I read it because it took me a while to get the answer. But I'm gonna sit on the feds and say, and I'm gonna sit with him. We're yeah, together I'm, on this. I'm, I'm gonna say, I think it's Wacky more. It's, uh, that the his name's his surname's Low. He coaches yeah. Germany. Yogi he Lowe. won the World yeah. Cup. He was fantastic. Yogi Germany Lowe. were fantastic in the World Cup. And it's it's I know it's sitting on the fence, but you're a World Cup winner, therefore you're the best coach in the world, not manager, but maybe coach in the world. Yeah, and when you fresh uh, Brazil seven one in their hometown in the, the final, you can't you can't knock that, can you? So right. uh, so I'm gonna forward you guys a question that people might be asking at home. Yep. Why aren't Pep Guardiola and Mourinho in that race for you guys? For me, both same answer for both managers. Great managers, I just don't like their style of football. Both both managers, like Mourinho, I respect him. I love him off the field. You know, I love his antics and I, and I love how how he just goes about it. But I just hate watching Chelsea. They're so negative. They're so boring. I just don't like their football. And same with Pep Guardiola. Not a fan of Pep's. Pass, 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 nah, not a fan. Chris? I, I, I am, I am, yeah. don't get me wrong, I am, I don't, don't think I hate him, because mm. I don't, it's just that I prefer, you know, I just don't prefer any of those, sorry, just there. Also, uh, the, the only, uh, Pep Guardiola, I do rate very highly, um, but with Mourinho, I don't rate him very highly, to be honest, I rate him as a manager, but what he brings to the whole Premier League, and his whinging, and, and the way he, 
the way he perceives himself and 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 the way and the he's world's speak, against Chelsea. It, yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, it makes you just it horse. makes you just it makes you just help hate Chelsea. As a Chelsea supporter, you probably think, "Geez, this bloke sometimes he doesn't represent the club very well." For me, that's why he's not just uh, uh, the best manager in the world. Yeah, fair points. Yeah, good points. Anyways, guys, let's get on to the brand new segment. Put your scarf on it. Welcome to the brand new segment. Put your scarf on it. Now, put your scarf on it is where we got a little betting regime between ourselves. Is where, like last week, we got a bold prediction. But this time, we have to name a team that is going to win and a player that's going to score a goal or an assist. Now, if those things do not happen, we, each other, have to wear an opposition scarf. So, for example... If I had said Wayne Rooney to score a goal and United to beat Newcastle, I got both of those wrong. I would be wearing a Liverpool scarf for the whole of next week's episode of The Seven Show. So it's a little something fun we got on The yeah, Seven Show between like ourselves. Let so, us know what you think of it, guys. If you don't like it, we'll take it out. If you like it, we'll keep going with it. Yeah, so next week you possibly could see Chris with a United scarf. That would, how good would that be to see, you know? <laughs> Anyways... Before we, should we do get your scarf on it first, or the predictions for the game? Scarf, we'll do, huh? Yeah, we'll do the scarf. We'll do the scarf. All right, Edgar, put your scarf on it, mate. All right, Who... so I'm putting my scarf on a, uh, on a under 2.5 for Sunderland and Villa, meaning that there'll be two goals at maximum, and I'm back in the photo to get a goal for uh, Sunderland. So, only two goals? Yeah, two goals maximum. And the foe, we'll see. the foe to get the goal? Yeah, poacher. Wow, wow. Mate, put your scarf on it. Manchester City to win. David Silva for a goal. Put your scarf on it. Yes, Chris? Sir. I'm going to go with the big the big Bentecosaurus uh, <laughs> to score and Liverpool to beat West Ham at home. Wow, all right, all right. Interesting stuff there. Interesting stuff. All right, now let's get into the results for this week. Newcastle at home to Arsenal. What are you tipping, lads? Yeah, I, I don't see um, Newcastle going back-to-back on a defensive performance like that. And I just see Arsenal just moving that ball and winning this game. Yeah, I'm going to go for a draw in this Ooh. game. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to say Newcastle might have built a bit of momentum and continue with their... and get a draw out of this As game. they seem to do every year at the start, don't they? Yeah, that's, just... yeah, that's right. All right, new, uh, Aston Villa at home to Sunderland. I'm going to go uh, Aston Villa for this game. Yeah, I'm going to back a draw here, guys. 1-1. One, one. Chris? Yeah, I go for draw. It's got draw written all over it, that game. Not many yeah. goals, mate. Yeah. Bournemouth at home to Leicester. I'm going to go for a little bit interesting. I'm going to go a Bournemouth yeah, win. So against... am I. Wow. So am I. Chris? I'm going to go for another draw. I'm going to see the fence this way. It should be a good game. Yeah. All right. All right. Chelsea at home to Crystal Palace. I tell you what, it's very hard to go past Chelsea, but yeah. no John Terry... I think it was Courtois back. Yeah, he, Zuma. He, he kept the other day. Yeah, Courtois then. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he is in here. So I'm. You can't go past Chelsea. I'm Chelsea. Yep. Yeah, Chelsea. 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 Liverpool against West Ham. Chris. Well, Ooh. Liverpool should win this game easily. Ooh. They should not because not because Liverpool playing so great in my opinion. More West Ham. How terrible they're playing. Yeah, that's playing. right. And Jenkinson helped us out heaps. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, she was playing. West Ham did beat Arsenal at the Emirates as well. Yeah, I was going to say, man. <laughs> Just a couple of weeks ago, we were singing their praises. I oh, know, but oh, I'm okay. tipping Liverpool. All home teams this week. Yeah, Chris. Okay. I mean, Edgar. Yeah, Liverpool, man. And I'm going to follow up with uh, Man City to take care of Watford yeah. comfortably. City to beat Watford. Yeah, City to beat Watford. Five nil. Five nil. Oh. Yeah, Aguero had trick. That's vicious. Silva to get a goal. And Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stoke at home to West Brom, and this has got draw written all yes, over sir. it. Yes, sir. I'm gonna back you on that one. Kurt. A draw for me. I'm gonna go with Stoke. I'm gonna go with Stoke to get their first win. Shakiri to get a debut goal. Yeah, they should get. Well, he got an assist last week, so he did, um, didn't he? Could follow up with a. Win. And a prediction that I'm gonna make: Harry Kane to get his first goal of the season, up and running in a Tottenham. One 0 win against Everton. Ooh, I don't think I don't think Ever- I don't think St- uh, Spurs will win this game. I think Everton would at least get a draw, if not win the game. I'm going to pick a draw, though. Yeah, I'm going to go for a draw, man. Uh, I'm just not convinced by uh, either defences. Yep. But I'm um, backing my boy Lukaku to get a goal here again. Oh, okay. Wow. All right, I'm going to go for another draw, and it's Southampton at home to Norwich City. Uh, draw written all over it for me. I'm going to back Norwich, man. Mm. Norwich. Gonna go for I was going to go Norwich. Norwich. Redmond to... Uh, 
still the show, yeah. Fire, all different, fire, mate. All different yeah, because I'm going to pick Southampton for their first win of the season. Because nice. I think they're due for a win. Yep. And the last game of the weekend, lads. Swansea at home to Manchester United. In a game, I'm predicting a draw. I can't see United yeah. bringing home three points as much as that pains me to say. It's midweek game in the um, Champions League. Yep. It, 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 Swansea, they're in good form. They're in really, really, really good form. form. You see what and, they did to, to Chelsea? And they should have won again on the weekend. Yeah, they, they did. So Yeah, look guys, this is a fixture that I dread every season. And I'm sure most teams do. But um, yeah, I'm going to go for a draw on this, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with the boys. I think this will be a draw. And it's going to be a very, very hard place for anyone to go to this Absolutely. season. Absolutely. Yeah, Gary Monk did a, a real, really good job there. But anyways, that's, that's the end of the seven show. Now, Already? I'm, yeah, I know. Like always, lads, uh, uh, if you want to get your Twitter questions in, please use the hashtag 7show. Uh, be up on the screen right here. And also, ask any questions about any Premier League club. Doesn't have to be Manchester United. Could be Liverpool questions for Chris. Could be any other in particular teams. Not just always Manchester United. So keep that in mind. Tell us what you thought of the new segment. Put your scarf on it. But until next time, lads, I've been your boy, Curtis Seven. This is Chris. This is Edgar. We are The Seven Show. Take care and peace. I was about to say hit or miss. Okay. Yeah, you did that last week. <laughs> nah, I fixed it. You, you fixed the fight. Did yes. you? Yeah, you didn't know that you said. I was nah, like, hit or, but you just. You hit and, you hit and, come out, or. Welcome to this segment, hit or miss. Really, nigga? For the weeks. Start again. Did I say or? Yeah. I yeah. fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> when you're watching this, you're fucking dumb out. <laughs> <laughs>